Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. And uh, no, I haven't had two breast implants and neither have I decapitated two stormtroopers. I'm going to be looking at a couple of helmets that I own, as always, the stuff that I review, I've owned and used, and uh, wondering, is a £500 helmet really that much better than a £130 one? So I've got a Shubath C5, an MT Helmet Storm, and um, we'll have a look at them. I use them for slightly different purposes, but I do use them. So let's start with having a look at the helmets. Starting with the information on the helmet, on the outside of the MT Helmets Storm, you've got the standards that it meets, the DOT and ECE standards, and also a weight label. You don't get these on the Shubath, you get the weight, but to actually find the standard label, you have to dig inside it, which, yeah, it's a bit of a fiddle to get to if you need to double check it for any reason, but it does mean it's harder to make fake ones of these because of the work that needs to go into putting one of these labels in. Obviously, neither of them is going to have a ACU gold sticker because they are flip-ups and I've only ever seen one ACU sticker on a flip-up helmet. There are reasons for this. Uh, the ACU website may explain it or uh, a race will be able to tell you why. Looking at the declared weights for these two helmets, the large MT weighs in at 1650 grams plus or minus 50 and the medium shoe berth is 1660 plus or minus 50. Important thing here, both of these fit my head. Don't go by the size on the helmet, try them on, make sure you get one that fits. And this is why it's more important to go to a shop and try them on and buy from the shop rather than order online and hope for the best. Another thing about buying online, the uh, helmet will go through a lot more people before it gets to you. So there's more chance of it being dropped, kicked or otherwise abused. If you buy it from a shop, yes, it's been delivered to them, usually by a reputable courier. But by the time you get it, it won't have been through anybody else's hands and the chance of being knocked about. Looking at the actual weights of these, you can see that the MT comes in 1657 grams, which is only 7 grams over the stated weight, but again with intolerance. And the Shubath comes in at 1683, 23 grams over, but again within the plus minus 50 grams tolerance stated. As you'd expect with the modern flip-up helmet they both come with the ratchet type straps but the Shubath one does have a little extra in that the padded strap underneath the actual locking strap does have a velcro piece on it which keeps it a little bit more uh, together and snug under your chin although I've not had a problem with the MT helmets one moving at all. As you would expect both have chin vents and uh, head vents and on the MT the exhaust for the head vent is on the side uh, you can see it here it's a it looks like a bracket on the side under this which I couldn't quite get with the camera is a small hole so the high speed air coming through here will actually drag air out of the helmet to provide the ventilation over the top of your head. The shoe berth actually has two ventilation points on the front one for your face and one for the visor as you can see here. There is one on top of the head as well and the exhaust vents are on the back at the top of the head. Of course the sun visors, the one on the storm is obviously on the left hand side, quite a large lever that you flick down and up. The one on the shoe berth, it's on the, actually on the bottom of the helmet. It's a little bit fiddly to find at first but you soon get used to it. Chin releases, nice quite easy pull forward on the MT. Shoe berth, a little bit more difficult, it's a push up and I usually have to open the visor and pull down as well on the top to actually get that to release and again when putting it back down I tend to have to lift the release part up to get it to engage cleanly. It is possible that you think the chin bar is all the way down but it isn't so just be aware of that. Either of these helmets can be used in the chin bar up or the chin bar down position. This requires a lock. On the Storm it's on the right hand side of the helmet and as you can see it's nearly 15mm across. Quite easy to operate even in thicker autumn spring gloves. On the left hand side of the shoe berth is a similar lock, trouble is it's tiny, it's only about 4mm across. Um, almost impossible to work in thin summer gloves let alone autumn winter gloves. It does lock the visor up, you do get a clink but it's obviously designed not to be used while you're actually moving or got your gloves on. You either have it open or have it closed and don't drop the chin bar during travel. You're not meant to do this anyway, certainly in the UK. If you stopped at a set of lights and you decide you want to ride with the chin bar up a bit, you really are going to struggle to find this. Visor releases on both of them are a little bit on the fiddly side compared to some I've had in the past. 
the Shubath one you push down a lever turn the visor back on itself I've already cleared the other side when uh, demonstrating this and on the MT it's a bit more fiddly you've got a little release to pull down but the indexing point of the visor it's, it sounds very clicky when you're getting it off and putting it back on again so uh, I'm not sure how long that's going to last and it looks like it strains the mechanism as well when you're taking it on or off cheek pads on either they're both plastic studs that uh, fit into receptacles on the actual helmet body itself The Shubath does come with ports to plug in the Shubath communication system. Again, that's rather pricey. You're looking about 300 quid for one of those. Maybe low 200s in the uh, autumn winter sales, which we're starting to run into in the UK as I record this. I haven't got one fitted. I don't really want to talk to anybody when I'm on the bike. And most people don't want to talk to me when I'm off the bike. So uh, I've not put one on. With the features covered, we need to also consider the performance. <clears throat> what you're going to get with any sort of helmet at all, flip up, solid face, you know, whatever, it's going to be sideways movement when you look left or right doing shoulder checks. Another thing is how noisy are the helmets. To test this, I did a qualitative rather than a quantitative experiment. I wedged the microphone of a mobile phone headset up against my ear, inside the helmet obviously, and went for a ride. I do wear earplugs, but um, there was a slight noticeable difference, but when we look at the figures, you can see that the cheaper MT helmet is a little bit noisier than the Shubath, at least in theory. The decibel scale is logarithmic, so either of these helmets, if you're in an industrial situation, you would be provided with hearing protection. And with the MT, it would be mandatory in the UK, because it's above 85 decibels, to wear the hearing protection provided. So, in summary, which of these do I trust my head to? Something that comes in at uh, 500 quid, or something that comes in... 130 quid well in a lot of magazine comparisons they're going to go cheapy 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 it's better it's all the standards and you're not paying for the same as the expensive one but it depends on what I'm doing I've been with both of these helmets for 2,000 miles plus more in the case of the Shubath because I've had it longer but um, I went round Wales for a couple of days 700 plus miles with the MT one and um, I wouldn't have any problem wearing it but I bought the MT for off-roading reason being that sometimes I'm not as good at off-road as I thought I was and fall off and other times I go exploring where I probably shouldn't and have to deal with things like this If I've got to replace one or other of the helmets, I can get three, four of these for the price of one of these. Long distance touring, I would probably go with the Shubath. I don't want comms, but it is quieter, it's a bit less draggy. Um, turning my head, it feels less that it's trying to pull my head round and I'm looking over my shoulder. Um, I'll cover looking at how to look over your shoulder easily in a, a short video at some point in the future by the way. So horses for courses, cheap falling off on the mud, one of these, long distance touring, one of these. Weirdly, we looked at the weights earlier, but even holding them like this, doing the conclusion, 
the Shuba does feel more than a few grams heavier. It feels a hundred grams heavier. Obviously it's not, but it's just how it feels. Anyway, hope this has been of use to you. Whatever helmet you buy, try it on, make sure it fits, get it from the shop, not online. Go and pick it up, don't get it delivered unless you're a stupid amount of miles away from where you're buying it from. And remember, don't be bothered by colours, by make, by you know any sort of stupid amount of money for a carbon one. Get the one that fits. The better the fit, the safer you are. Anyway, hope to see you in the next video. Until then, safe riding.